Hi, I'm Mike from 1A Auto. We've been selling auto parts for over 30 years. All right, so we're gonna take the tire off. Um, on most Volkswagens, there's little caps that go over these lugs. And the caps, you're gonna need the tool um, from the spare tire kit. You will put in and grab, it's like a hook, and you'll pull the cap out. But this vehicle does not have those on currently. So we're just gonna uh, loosen up the lugs with a 17 millimeter socket and a breaker bar. One at a time, just a little bit. Raising and jacking this vehicle, you're not going to want to use a jack or a jack stands on here on the control arms or on this aluminum um, because you may break the aluminum um, or there. Um, some places you can jack up from is over here where the pinch weld is. On this Volkswagen you can see there is specific spots where you're supposed to jack the vehicle or support the vehicle. These little arrows indicate that and right on the pinch weld is the strongest part to be jacking and supporting. And same over here. This side little arrow pointing down. This one looks like it got smashed a little bit. So we're going to take off the lug, the lugs. Volkswagen has lug bolts, not lug nuts or lug studs. So you need to be careful when Pulling off the wheel. And then you grab the wheel. It comes right down. Next, we're going to take off this retainer that holds the caliper to the bracket. You can use needle nose or a straight screwdriver. Just pull that part out first. Comes right off. Now we're going to pull off the caliper slide bolts, but before we do that, there is these caps that go over. I believe this one has one missing, but you can just take a small screwdriver, pry it out, and pull it off. Next, we're going to use a seven millimeter Allen and a ratchet to take out the caliper bolts. If it doesn't come out completely, that's okay. It just needs to be backed off so we can pull the caliper off. All right, on this vehicle, um, on the driver's side, sometimes they have pad sensors. Um, this is the connector for the pad sensor. So before you pull the caliper off on the driver's side, you're gonna wanna disconnect this one. This one is actually broken as you can see, but to release it, you just slide that out. You can put a little screwdriver in here, straight. Just bend it back slightly. And be careful, because the plastic might break. There we go, and it clicked, and that's good. Now we're gonna pull off the caliper. We're gonna pull straight back. We pull off the pad one at a time. This pad comes out straight like that because there's clips on it. There's the sensor.
Then we're gonna hang our caliper with a bungee cord. So it doesn't fall. You don't wanna put any strain on the brake line. Next, we're gonna take this caliper bracket off. We're gonna take off this, these two 21 millimeter bolts, the socket and the breaker bar. Take the two bolts loose. So loose, you can do it by hand. You can pull them out. You're gonna take the bracket, slide it out towards the front of the car. To get the center cap out, I'm just gonna use the back of a screwdriver, push it through. I'm only gonna put three lug bolts in because we're not gonna be driving this down the road. We just need this to hold the rotor from spinning. Now I'm gonna take the 24 millimeter socket with a long breaker bar and break that free. Use your body weight as leverage. If you need to, get a long pipe to add to the breaker bar. Now I'm gonna go with the ratchet. the vehicle back up to take the wheel off. We're gonna take the lug nuts off again. We're gonna hold the wheel so it does not fall. Now we're gonna to wanna to separate our rotor from the hub. There is this little T30 screw. We use a T30 bit, a Torx, and a ratchet. We'll loosen it. Holding the rotor in case this one's pretty solid. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a Lug nut in there. All right, because the rust has built up on the hub, it has caused the rotor to stick to the hub. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna break that rust free. We're gonna use a hammer. We can hammer all around this area. Um, if you are reusing your rotor, you would not wanna beat on the surface of the rotor. So sometimes they're tricky, sometimes they're harder than that. Um, in worst case, you use a bigger hammer or sometimes some rust penetrant. You can spray in the holes and let it sit for a while. And pull off the rotor. So this vehicle is very rusty. You can see that the bolts are rusted in the the knuckle area is rusty, so we're gonna use some penetrant, some rust penetrating spray. When using the rust penetrant, um, you're gonna wanna let it soak for a little bit, and that will help and to break the, uh, the bolts free. All right, next, we're gonna separate the ball joint from the control arm. It's the easiest way to um, gain access to the wheel bearing. 
Uh, we're gonna use a 16 millimeter deep socket, an extension, and a ratchet. Next, we're gonna separate this, pull it out, and we should be able to move the ball joint away from it. And pull the axle out. This one came out fairly easily. If it does not come out easily, you can put the axle nut back in and tap it with a hammer or even use a socket. Next, we're gonna use a triple square um, a lot of Volkswagens um, use these, and uh, this one is an M12. We're going to use it with a 13 millimeter socket and a ratchet. All right, if you move the axle out of the way, I'm going to put the ball joint back in just so that the knuckle won't move, so I have more leverage. See, then the knuckle didn't move. And then loosening up the bolt. Should be able to do it by hand, depending on how rusted the bolts are. Okay, now we got all the bolts out that come from the back. And um, the hub, you can try to pull it, but it's pretty rusty on there. So we're gonna try to hit it off with a hammer. And bang on the back side here. I'm gonna support it while I keep tapping it. As you can see, this is our old bearing. This is our new 1AAuto.com bearing. Um, if you look at it, um, it's machined the same. There is some slight differences, uh, like this channel in here, but these surfaces are machined exactly the same. Um, if you look at the bottom, it's the same. This is your ABS reluctor on the back side. So when the sensor will pick that up as you're going. Um, one way you can tell this bearing is making noise. You can't hear it on the video, but um, one way to tell if your wheel bearings are bad is when you're going down the road, you're hearing almost like a loud groaning noise. Um, and it may change pitch when you're going side to side. What we're going to want to do before we put our new wheel hub assembly on, um, we're going to want to clean up this area right here where the hub goes into the knuckle. We use a little brake cleaner to clean it off. All right, I'm gonna use a little bit of anti-seize just in case we ever have to do this again. Just put it, just a light coat. This stuff. Now we're gonna put our new hub on. There is no up and down. Um, there is, you don't wanna go that way, but there is, it, it doesn't matter whether it's top or bottom. It slides right in nice and easy. On the bolts, I'm just gonna put a little bit of that anti-seize just in case we ever have to do it again. Right, now we're going to put the bolts in. Okay, 
Now we're gonna use the torque wrench. Um, the torque spec is in Newton meters, which is 70 Newton meters. Um, this torque wrench is a foot pounds torque wrench, so we converted it to about 50 foot pounds. Now I'm going to separate the control arm again to put the axle back in. I can pull it out of my way. And you can put some anti-seize on those spines if you need to, if you want. But this one slides in really good. And we can put our ball joint back in. Put the new nuts on. We're going to use a torque wrench and these nuts are to be torqued to 60 newton meters. Take our little torx bolt, screw that in. We're going to put our axle bolt in. Um, it's recommended that you replace this when doing this job, but for the sake of the video, we are reusing it. Snug it down by hand. All right, we're going to install the wheel. With the center cap off, so that we can torque our axle bolt. Now we're gonna drop the car down again. So the tire is just touching the ground. Right, we're gonna tighten down the axle nut. Uh, we're gonna tighten it to 52 foot pounds. We're going to reinstall our caliper bracket, slide it over the rotor. Okay, now we're going to install our caliper bracket bolts. Now we're going to torque our caliper bracket bolts. They're to a 155 Newton meters on this vehicle. Now we're going to use some channel locks to compress the piston. I'm going to do this very gently. You don't want to squeeze too hard. As we're squeezing this, we didn't have to go very far. Um, normally, if your brakes were really bad, um, this piston would be out further. When you compress this, this is pushing brake fluid up into, back into your master cylinder reservoir. And when doing this job, because we're not cracking any lines or taking off any components, that have to do with that system. Uh, we do not have to bleed the brakes after finishing this job. All right, we're gonna take our new brake pads, stick them in the caliper. These brackets go right into the hole of the piston. Just like so. 
We're gonna take our other brake pad, put it in the caliper bracket. And we're gonna take our caliper, keeping the pad sensor out of the way. Slide on our caliper. You're gonna take your caliper connector. Um, it's the warning. Um, when the brakes get thin, um, it will break the connection and it'll tell you your, your brakes are thin. So you plug that into there until it clicks and then it'll slide right back onto the bracket. All right, so we're gonna put the um, caliper slide bolts in. What we wanna do is take a little bit of brake grease them up. I'm going to insert our caliper slide bolt. a ratchet and our seven millimeter Allen socket. We're gonna torque these slide bolts to 15 Newton meters. We're gonna install this dust cap. It goes over where the caliper bolt goes in. Next, we're gonna put this um, retainer that goes on the outside of the caliper, keeps the caliper down where it's supposed to be on the pads. So um, what I like to do is push down into the hole using needle nose, it seems to work best. Get it in that hole and you can push the spring. Make sure you push it down. Now I'm gonna install the tire. Line up with the holes and hold it. And we'll use our 17 millimeter socket to put our lug studs on, or lug bolts, whatever you wanna call it. our center cap on. Now we're gonna torque the lug studs to 120 Newton meters in a star pattern. When you do it in a star pattern, it makes the wheel go flush to the brake rotor properly. Whenever you change front end components or remove front end components and reinstall them, you always wanna to go to a local garage and have an alignment performed because you are gonna change the geometry of the wheel and tire um, going down the road and you do not want premature wear on your tires. So you wanna make sure you do that and you'll be all set. Thanks for watching. Visit us at 1AAuto.com for quality auto parts, fast and free shipping, and the best customer service in the industry.